Today's video is all about bull flags and bear flags and the derivatives even of those patterns. So potentially a, a wedge that you might see or a triangle coming off of those flags. But I think the core thing here is once again, I am trying to use my YouTube channel to give away as much as I know to meet other traders, to hear their feedback or their experiences. And really, after doing this for more than a decade, I've decided it's time for me to just start sharing and and you know from all the time i've spent building products or networks brokerages research platforms i just want to yeah get it all out there so you may have seen me across trading view or stock tweets or other networks but the first thing that i want to show here is a bull flag now a bull flag is quite literally what it sounds like meaning if you wanted to draw a flag well you could draw a flag and actually as a fun example so you just can't miss it I'm sort of drawing in real time here a, an American flag, actually. So you can see here a bull flag essentially is a chance for you to visualize the flag on the chart. Now, this is obviously an art and a science because there's no such thing as a pattern in technical analysis that works all the time. It just does not exist. But the point here is that if you do your research correctly maybe you know you can have a better chance or as i like to say throughout my youtube channel just make less bad decisions now this isn't the greatest american flag i think i have some colors mixed up these stars don't look right but the point here is i'm just trying to illustrate when people say bull flags or bear flags this is sort of what they're trying to talk about there is quite literally a straight move up and then a consolidation to the side and if you were to draw a flag you would see that flag just like this this is the flag now there are a few things about these bull flags though that you should know now i'm going to delete the drawing here because i think now the visual is in your mind you probably can't miss it number one is they don't always work so when technical analysts or chartists or traders say there's a flag developing get in now this could be big it's not true they literally don't always work there are plenty of occasions where this they might top over and before you know it you thought you spotted this great flag and before you know it it's back down to the price it started at that does happen quite a bit i think the percentages maybe flags work a little more than 50 percent of the time so it's uh, almost to some degree like rolling dice but it is a powerful pattern and i do know even though it's slightly more than 50 percent that's better than a lot of other patterns so the key thing here is that well why does a flag happen well, I'll walk you through the psychology of a flag so that you know what you're looking for and how to think about it. Maybe how to enter or exit even. So you can see here on this chart, I'm looking at bandwidth and B-A-N-D. By the way, remember this is all for education. I'm never giving advice or anything of the sort. I'm not a financial advisor. I've just been working in financial markets for a decade. But essentially what you have here is bandwidth had an earnings report and the company spiked so there was an event that caused the spike in addition what you're also going to notice on this chart is a huge volume spike so people saw the earnings report and they got excited about it now if you look at the earnings report itself if you dive in i'll make another video about how to read earnings report you'll see that they surprised wall street and the market in general they beat on earnings you can see that in green here they beat on revenue you can see that in green here so there's a reason and a justification for this flag. That to me is always one of the most important points about following flags, whether they're bullish or bearish. And I'll walk through a bearish one next. At least you know there's a reason. Now, the second thing to understand about the flag is what is the range of the flag? Now it's up to you how you want to draw the range. You could look at the most high uh, wick here. So that would be in this case, 21. Or you can try to look for the highest bars or candles and sort of where the open or close is in that case it looks to be like there's a zone here we'll just sort of blend that in more so around twenty dollars i think the more common way to draw such flags often is to really look for the zone and more so estimate than draw sort of the exact so you probably use a rectangle line like that so now you know what the top of the flag is because this is the top of the flagpole then you do the same thing for the bottom and you can just sort of see well where's the bottom here okay this is probably the bottom range in fact you might even move this up a little because there's just been this was the first day after the event see this candle so why use that candle that was the shock moment it's going to be volatile it's 
tons of information being processed. By the time you get to the second, third, fourth day, the information is being processed. And just to illustrate the flag a little bit more and how to think about it, you can now see these zones. There was selling here, selling here, selling here. There was buying here, buying here, and there might be some buying here. So the point being is you've got the top and bottom of the flag. So now you can kind of understand your range and how to trade this. This only makes sense, of course, if you missed the earnings move. So you've already missed the earnings move. That was down here is when the really smart people were buying or holding. But nevertheless, you have to now ask yourself, well, okay, the trade here is that this is the potential bottom of the flag. So this is the buy zone. And this is the top of the flag. So you can just map out your trade right away. You've got an entry then of about 1830 with a possible target of 20. And you can map your exit out to be right, you know, not far from the zone. Because if this zone breaks, you might then start to say, well, the whole pattern's invalidated. The flag is it's done. It's it looks like it's breaking breaking down. So when you see these flags, I think point number one is that they do work. There's, a, there's statistical evidence to show that there's something here. Most importantly, I think when you align it with a fundamental event or a key event that makes it make sense. I don't really believe so much in flags that have no news or no events because what's you know you you want to find some catalyst what what do you what are you missing there's usually something out there that would explain the big up move this case was a huge earnings report so you know the fundamentals then the market must think the fundamentals are there now you've set your trade up you can see where your stop loss is where your where your exit would be and that's not a bad trade at all in this case, especially knowing that the bias in these flags, these bull flags, is often to the upside. One more quick other tip for thinking about these flags, and I'm going to go to a weekly, is that you probably, give me one second, you probably want to zoom out. And I've made some charts before, that's what that text was from. And now you can see that, holy cow, if this flag does actually reverse the way it should, Right, you might get it up into here. There's a lot of room here, and prior price history. This says 25. You can see at one point it was 60. You can go all the way back up here to when it was in the hundred dollars per share. Basically, this could be potentially a major turning point for a stock that has been absolutely hammered over since 2020. It was once at 190 dollars a share, went as low as 10. So the point there is these flag events as well. If you zoom out, could measure the start of something. I would also add that if this was, say, an IPO and it just flagged off the start, well, it's just there's no price history. Once again, that bullish bias might be rather interesting to you. So delete all my drawings here so I can have a fresh chart. So the key here is that flags are a bullish way to play the markets and you can set up your risk and reward just as I was demonstrating. You show the top of the flag, the bottom of the flag and plan accordingly. But remember, flags don't always work and more importantly, there are bearish flags as well. And bearish flags are exactly what they sound like. Now, Lululemon is down a lot. It was once $475 a share. They had a earnings report that wasn't loved and it's dropped to 391. And you can maybe say that from here, a bearish flag is forming. So we could probably do something like this. It looks a little early, but this is sort of where flags are powerful patterns. You can sort of start to map out the trade as such. This is the bullish, bearish, sorry, bearish flag. A bearish flag is just upside down. It's the same thing as the bullish flag, but now you're drawing the flag in an upside down fashion. It's going the other way way so this is similar in the sense that okay you have your top of the range bottom of the range top of the range but with bearish flags there's a tendency and i think once again some decent statistical evidence to show that these flag patterns more often than not break to the downside so it's an upside down flag means that there's this bullish bias or bullish pattern forming and this is just a quick example of how you can draw a bearish flag. Now this one's not perfect. It looks a little early. However, this is sort of how you can start to map the trade out if that's what you're thinking about. Do you want to buy the dip in Lululemon? Well, if you use some classical technical analysis looking for flags, 
you might get a head start on mapping that bearish flag out to see what your trade looks like. If buying the dip is indeed what you want to do, well, you can define your entry and your exit pretty easily here. I would say that your exit for sure is going to want to be the low of this flag. Because if the earnings report was that bad, you don't know how many investors are stuck. You don't know how sour they are on the investment. Also, if you zoom out, it's possible that investors have been in here since the 200s. Maybe they're ready to take their profits. Some really long-term investors could have been involved in here since the 50s, the 60s, in which case they're up enormous. And maybe this one earnings report just invalidated the thesis. Hey, they already made their large uh, amount of money being that long term of an investor. So perhaps they're moving on to the to the next investment. And that's where this flag comes into play if that's what it's saying about what buyers and sellers are doing. So you have your risk defined. This would probably be your stop loss. This would probably be your take profit if you're trying to buy the dip. But the same could be true if you're trying to short it. Now you can imagine that if the flag is forming there might be a consolidation which is a key part of flags price seems to consolidate within this area. Buyers and sellers are trying to find a fair equilibrium price. They're potentially using the options market to get their trades sort of figured out. On stocks of this size and the billions of dollars of market cap and billions of dollars that have shares that are exchanging hands every week or month, there's going to be a market that has to be made. And so there will naturally be some consolidation as the new information is digested and the bear flag or the bull flag becomes sort of your guide for that consolidation. Once again, it does not always work, but it's a mental model to approach these types of trades on. And I find them to be quite powerful and I'll tell you why. A lot of people who've been coming to my channel lately are new investors or new traders. And for me, the key thing there is that just because Lululemon is down does not mean you just rush in and buy, buy, buy. There's just no reason. If you have these mental models and these concepts of these patterns that are repeating on the flat in terms of flags, then you know you have something to work with. Don't just rush in and try to buy the dip. Map out what the potential trade could look like. Map out the journey down, the absolute low so far, the absolute high, and use this as a way to sort of map out what could happen. And just by doing that, you're taking time to understand you know, what type of trade you're making. And the simple act of performing such an exercise can have you making less bad decisions. And you'll find that's often a theme in my videos, which is just make less bad decisions. Now, there's no secret sauce in this. They don't always work, but there is statistical evidence if you go around the web and look to show that they can have a high percentage hit rate in terms of sort of the direction that they tend to break to, whether it's a bearish direction or on the other chart we were looking at band, if it's a bullish direction. So I would encourage you to research all of this more. And one final concept that I do think is important is just to say that, remember, this is, this is a form of classical technical analysis. And there is no secret sauce here. And by the way, for those who think that it's just sort of drawing on a chart, making things up, I, I would encourage you just to keep in mind that it's not so much that I'm saying this is an exact science and that this always works. Actually, the opposite. It's more so that I'm saying that this can just be a guide to slow down, to try to analyze what could happen in the future, and to try to use prior price history to try to use evidence from countless other trades throughout history, countless other companies throughout history that have found themselves in a situ similar situation, and then using that sort of, um, an, you know, what's happened to all of those companies and applying it to the trade that you're trying to make. And what I mean by that is flags were not just made up out of thin air. Over time, enough people started to realize over all of the hundreds or thousands of companies that have gone public over time or traded, they found that this pattern just kept showing up. It could have showed up in 1970, could have showed up in 1999, could have showed up in 2005, 7, 2015. And that's sort of the framework for, wow, patterns are repeating. After all, trading is driven by humans, just like you and I. We are repeating uh, animals. We, we generate habits and we do things over and over again. There's no reason why our habits sometimes don't 
go into markets. And that, after all, is sort of what you're trying to track with these flags. So I hope this video helps all of the aspiring traders out there, new ones especially, but even those who need a refresher on flags, or maybe they've just made a few bad trades on these down moves. I hope that by me giving a walkthrough of flags uh, helps you quite a bit. So let me know in the comments what you think. Add anything to this. This is not an exact science. This is just a quick introduction video to get things started. So appreciate everyone watching, and I'll see you soon.